the 18th, 2013, <clears throat> I was diagnosed with stage four cancer of the colon and tumours on the liver. It seemed like a death sentence. Stage four. Stage four, yeah. Um, 10% survival for two years, you know. Um, I had to undergo a massive operation a few days later, rush, rush me in. And I always remember two days before the operation, they give you a pre-op test, you know, test your heart and lungs and everything. Mm -hmm. And as Anne and I walked away from the nurse who'd conduct, she said, good luck on your journey. And uh, the word journey stuck with me. It, it, immediate journey. It was a journey where you don't know the destination. You don't know how long it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Twists and turns, roadblocks, impossible things to get past, you know. And everything whirls through your head. You, you're paranoid. You look things up on Google. Oh, my God, it's worse than I thought, you know, but whatever. And... I wanted to live, and I wanted to live for a variety of reasons. But I've learned in my professional life, and for bodybuilders as well, mm -hmm. you have to set the ultimate goal. Don't get, have ten goals, you, you, you'll get messed up. Mm -hmm. My goal was not to leave Anne alone. I, I always say to her, I ain't going anywhere. I got very positive about it. Now, some people are positive and don't make it. It's still a crapshoot, you know. But I learned early on, we're not obsessed with it. I learned, and this is advice I'd give anybody getting into this, either a family member, because just about everybody knows somebody who's going through cancer. Don't look back. Why did this happen? Why did this happen to me? Was it because I did this? Did... No, you've got it. You've got a broken leg. It doesn't really matter whether you do it falling downstairs or playing hockey. Fix the leg. I was lucky enough to get a fantastic oncologist and a fantastic clinic. I'm going to say his name, Dr. Frank Rodriguez, Florida cancer specialist, and all the nurses there. And um, in those early days, we didn't have... I didn't, my health coverage wouldn't cover it until the affordable health care came in. And we spent $300,000 on medical expenses. I didn't know. And paid those bills. If she'd have told me I'm paying this money, I would have said no because we had no guarantee we were going to get any far. And the other thing is, don't look back, don't look too far forward. Just to the next appointment, the next scan, test, operation. Don't become obsessed with it. Don't let it impact on your life. Don't let that bastard define who you are. And I've always been a very visual person. And I imagine cancer as like a six foot three big black cloud that's shaped like a person, but isn't. And I'm in the ring with him. And my job is not really to knock him out. It's to stop him coming across the middle of that ring. I will not let him get into my side of the ring. I know it sounds a bit insane, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, you, you have to have these... Goals and like I say, my goal was never to leave Anne alone. And I had chemotherapy for four and a half years, went into shock a few times. Um, and then the chemo stopped working. You know, it kept it at bay. And they tried this other treatment with me where they put radioactive particles into me which just attacked the cancer cells. And that had great effect it stopped everything it didn't clear everything and then I was off cancer treatment chemo for eight months and felt terrific yeah. came back again in January and I've gone on to a immunology um, program and that seems to be working even though I'm losing my hair which the first time around didn't these are different drugs in fact Chris Cormier way back dubbed me the silver fox well chris i'll soon be the fox <laughs> silver is gone um so as i say for, for for others never give up you know i've been in enormous pain at times but 
I've always had the confidence it's it's going to end, it's, it's going to stop, I, I'll get there. And I'm just a belligerent person who doesn't like to miss anything. I was always the last kid to leave the football pitch when it was too dark to play. You know, I, I don't... Uh, in 2030, when I was diagnosed, the World Cup was the next year, and I thought, well, I'm not going to see that. I've seen the 2018, 2018 <laughs> World Cup now. So... I was lucky to have a great doctor. My advice to people is you have to fight for your life. You have to not argue with your doctor, but your input is just important because you're going through it. If you're dissatisfied, if you think you're being ignored, find a new oncologist, somebody that believes in you. And don't Google things, you'll drive yourself nuts. You know, Take your doctor's advice if you believe in him. You know, just fixate on getting better. And in time, with me, because we've had so many hurdles, mm -hmm. the next hurdle never seems as high because mm -hmm. I've been through this nearly six years now. And I've got a Scottish heritage, Scottish or Irish heritage, and there's a, a Scottish... Um, ballad about a, a soldier, you know, back in 1700s, mm -hmm. and he said, the line goes, I am wounded, but it's, it's not mortal, mm -hmm. so I'll write, lie myself down, bleed a little, and then I'll get up and fight again, and that's how I always feel, you know, mm -hmm. hang in there, like Winston Churchill said, mm -hmm. I think the British coming out now, <laughs> if you're going through hell, Keep going, you know. And um, th there are new treatments all the time. The treatment I'm having now wasn't available. Another doctor who wasn't an oncologist once told me way back, a friend, says your job is to keep going year by year because there'll always be something new coming along and it's been proved right. So we... we, we you have to look at cancer as an enemy, as, a, as an entity. I look at it as, uh, you know, I have so much support from friends, family, the community. Everybody's on my side. Everybody's on the side of the person who's got cancer. Nobody's on cancer's side. He is a bastard. And... You know, I, I've seen many things. I've seen many people recover. I've seen the opposite. You know, and, it, you know, it does break your heart. You know. But uh, I feel in a good place, you know. I've put what is the condition right now for those? The reason they put me back on treatment, there are certain tests they do. One of the tests is called a tumour count, mm -hmm. which it, it, it grades the activity, strength and energy of the cancer and you're supposed to be down at a level of between 7 and 15. Mine climbed and climbed and climbed until it got to 3,800. You can go higher and still not be fatal but you know you don't want it to go much higher. This new treatment after three sessions took that tumour count which is the energy level and strength and the way it's going to pound into you took it from 3,800 to 280 in three sessions. I've had two more sessions since. I'll have at least another session before they scan again. I've put weight on, which if you've got cancer is always a, a good sign. Um, I'll live with the, um, you know, the, the hurt loss, even though it was my only distinctive feature. <laughs> and, uh, I was suffering from arthritis as well, you know, which I now use a cane. And I got very attached to it, so much so that I give it... When you keep going, every yeah. day you keep going. Yeah, I've given it a name. Hello, my name's Michael Kane. Not a lot of people know that, you know. <laughs> yes, keep your sense of humour as well, you know. And, um, you know, you, you just have to... Trust in your doctors. Don't reflect back. Don't obsess on it. Don't look forward. 
I'd like to help somebody like that. You know, I'm, I'm willing. I don't know whether that helps, but I never thought I'd be here talking to you in, in 2019, you know. Um, I'll just keep going.